Yo, what's up with it? It's your boy, Nooney. It's Leo in the third house, and we back with another week. Yo, what's up with it? This your boy, Nooney, and that's Leo in the third house, back with another reading. This is going to be another pick a card reading. We're going to be asking a question. Well, I'm not even going to have to ask a question. We're just going to be, um, this is predictions for the next 90 days. Well, for the rest of the year. For the rest of the year. All right. That's what the intention was behind the rest of the year. Um... I think that was it. That, that was it. I just wanted to know what can we experience or what can we expect for the rest of the year. All right. So 2022. This is 2022. So, but whenever you watch this video, it's still timeless. So even if I put, you know, 2022, maybe I shouldn't put 2022. Maybe I should just put predictions for the rest of the year because truthfully, the patterns always keep playing out. So today you may be pile two. Tomorrow you may be, you know, next year you may be pile four. You know, and so on and so forth. You know, sometimes it's a progression, but it's just a pattern that we exercise over and over again, but in different variables, different people, different scenarios, different scenes, but same life lessons just on a larger scale. All right. But anyway, without doing too much talking, uh, we got four piles. I don't know. Maybe I'm feeling skittish or antsy today. I, I feel like I need to be moving, doing stuff. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's a holiday. It's a Labor Day. So I'm just like. I need to be going somewhere. I need to do something. So the first thing I had to do was work. Then I'm about to go show my tail feather. <laughs> about to go show my ass. You hear me? But um, that's it. Uh, do I have any more? As always, thanks to those people who be liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting, getting involved. You know, that's my spill, but thank y'all, seriously. You know, I know I do that regularly, doing it that way, but thank y'all, for real. This is like one of the best things I've ever done for me, you know, and it's so great because it helps other people. So I'm really enjoying myself. Thank y'all for allowing me to be here with y'all. Thank y'all for all the support, for all those comments, for all the emails, for just everything, for the donations, for book and readings, for just trusting in me, for giving me information when I didn't even know or I was confused or lost and giving me pointers. Yo, I definitely value y'all. You know, I appreciate it to the most, to the utmost. But um, I don't want to do too much talking. Let's just get straight into it. This is going to be pile one. This is going to be pile two. This is going to be pile three. This is going to be pile four. All right. When I come back, I'm getting started over here with pile one. Boom. Pile one. So pile one. What can you expect for the rest of the year? So maybe some of you are a magician or I always say creator. So chances are you are a creator. Most likely, most likely online because we got Aquarius energy here. But we also got uh, the magician. I mean, musician. So this is a singer. All right. But it doesn't have to be. It could be a rapper. It could be an artist. It could be someone who just uses a microphone on a regular, i.e. me. You know what I mean? Or you could just be somebody who mm, most likely is a free spirited type of individual, a person who's very creative, who finds opportunities where there normally aren't one. So even if you aren't necessarily a creator, you're a person who finds opportunities where there normally aren't one. That's what's coming in. It's going to be an energy like that. And it's going to be increasing your public image and your reputation. All right. Now this could deal around work because we got six house here. So let's go over the signs real quick. I got Aquarius. I got Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. I have Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. I have Aries. Virgo, Capricorn again, and did I say Aquarius? Because that's what we got. All right. It's, oh, the advice here is what is keeping you from expressing yourself? All right, but that's what I feel like. Because the first card out, because I'm skipping all around, right? Because the first things that was noticed is the first things I called out. But the first card out was re re reclaim your power, which is in reverse. All right, and this is about working to reclaim your power. Duh. And looking and noticing how you've given your power away. Now, this could be towards status, fame, recognition, or this could be towards like your long term goals where you're not being dedicated and really seeing an opportunity where there is one because the musician is right next to it. So it's like about seeing potential for success. All right. It says devotion. So you're going to be devoting yourself, making your life a, a living prayer, making your life a moving prayer, potency. And then regaining your power. 
So you're going to be devoted to yourself more. All right. Devoted probably to a craft, to an art, to a creative way of expression. Because that's what it's saying. You're going to be finding confidence because confidence is right over top of uh, what is keeping you from expressing yourself. So your confidence is going to be peaking. All right. You're probably going to be getting into that. So you got a rebirth. Oh, yeah, we got rebirth. Oh, this is good. Rebirth and a symbol of money is coming. It says, pay attention to the signs, no matter how small. All right, and then show the world the real you. All right, ah, oh, okay, 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 okay. This is all saying the same thing. Oh, okay, next time I'll probably just survey this situation first and then give you the reading because this is pretty like cut and dry. So we might make this one a kind of short one. All right, things are gonna pick up too because we got the road runner here, all right? So you may have to walk away from someone because we got the six of, uh, six of wands here. There's going to be a victory in here. You could have been walking away from someone. Could be walking away from an earth sign towards Virgo Capricorn. Or you could just be walking away from like the instability or from that energy of being lazy and not putting the time and the effort in. All right. Six of Wands is not usually about walking away. But in this picture, that's what she's doing. But she's taking an opportunity. So this is a chance for you to no longer be lethargic or, or like um, laying back in the cut. All right. There's going to be an energy of you actually exposing who you are, being more authentic to who you are, claiming your independence. But this is not really like, no, let me not say claiming your independence. Maybe it's like claiming your sovereignty. Because what you're doing is, is allowing yourself to be bold, allowing yourself to take charge of you, no longer allowing other people's perspective or other people's input or other people's fame, success, their public status recognition hinder yours. All right. Because when a, or Aquarius energy shows up, the, the, let yourself be the real you. This is like uh, acting in a way where you don't care how others are perceiving you. You know, it's just finding your own freedom and just being genuine to who you are. So that's going to be coming in. Now, you could be working on your health. You know, I always say I like to say that because Virgo energy is here whenever I see that. But also something big about Virgo. Virgo also rules confidence. So I was talking to somebody who was saying that Virgos are more of a Leo than a Leo is. And I could agree with that. Virgos are very attractive, right? And that's, you know, by sidereal, they are Leos. But, you know, we're not going to go too far into that. Um, but what I was thinking about this is that uh, your, your confidence is going to be working. So you're going to be handling more responsibilities, probably getting more of a schedule, a routine. Because that's what Virgo represents, routine, schedule, consistency. All Earth energy represents consistency, stability, and some sort of practical routine, all right? Virgo is just the best at building routines because they're very good at details and organizing and, you know, just having things running like a well-worn machine, all right? Um, so there's going to be a rebirth here. You're going to be listening to your own, I was going to say psychic abilities, but I was also going to say listening to your own, um, you know, intuition is there, yes, but it's more like your, yes, yeah, your intuition. You're thinking your senses, like becoming, it's just like root chakra energy I'm thinking of, it becoming more grounded, but also being coming more aware of yourself. Not really aware of your environment, because that's usually what root chakra is about, your environment. But this is becoming more aware of yourself, which determines the energy that's projected out there into your environment. So if you're going into a situation with optimism, chances are you're going to see optimism return back towards you. You know, people are going to carry that same bubbly, vibrant energy, right? But if you're going into an energy or going into a job or going into a, a relationship or going into anywhere in this life right now without believing that this can happen, then things will not happen. You know, you'll, they'll, they'll show themselves to be true to you either which way you want it to be, all right? But it says that you're going to be walking away from someone who's giving you the runaway. Stop chasing them. You are so, worth so much more. And we got Ten of Swords. Yeah, we got Ten of Swords here. So you're going to be walking away and starting something brand new. Could be with a Cancer Pisces Scorpio. Or it could just be with someone who's, um, you know, a creative, an artist, a poet, someone who's very romantic. They could be a little bit younger than you or a lot bit younger than you. Usually with a, a page energy, this is someone who's very young, you know, and it could be male or woman. It's, it's usually dual in sex. So it could be man or woman. And, um... And it's usually a younger woman or a younger child, a younger boy. So pay attention to that. But that's what's really going to be playing in. Like, you know, with this with this rebirth, you're going to be paying attention to a lot of your, your signs and your synchronicities, really tapping in and feeling what's going on. And then, you know, you'll probably be getting either new inspiring ideas to be creative or you'll be having a brand new passion to start with someone who's very romantic, very childlike, very playful, who's kind of flirty. 
um, could just be having a new romantic cycle with someone like that. And it could be someone at your work, because that's what just popped into my head here was the sixth house. Could be someone at your work. All right. But you're going to be getting out of this energy of just like being so laid back or, you know, because the king of pentacles in reverse for me is a person who doesn't put the time and the effort or the energy in to creating things or to, to building stability or inheriting um, financial or inheriting physical acquirement, or physical acumens or acquirements, right? This is someone who usually prefers like to lay in the cut. You know, they like to invest, but sometimes they, they, they wait so long. They, they uh, procrastinate because that's what a king of, a king of uh, pentacles in reverse can be a procrastinator. So they procrastinate so long that they miss opportunities. All right. Instead, what you're going to be doing is going to be a period of time where you're going to be taking a leap from that. You're going to be taking a risk on that. So risk is going to be playing a part here. All right. And it's going to make you more devoted to your own life story, making you become more. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's perfect. Because the Ace of Torches was looking like a wand, like a uh, like a paintbrush, and then right next to a page of cups, he is a painter, an artist, a creative. You know what I mean? He's a romanticizer of life, so he sees all, he sees life in like vibrant colors. Like there's, he has a great imagination, right? So you could be coming into that energy, or like I said, there could be someone who's coming into your life to inspire this type of energy, and it could be romantic because the page of cups is a romantic person, but he's normally just very flirty. He doesn't really know how to initiate or take certain uh, certain emotional connections further. So even if it is somebody here, they're not quite necessarily um, knowing how to push the situation further. You know, there is potential for it to grow and they're open to it. They're just not quite sure how to pursue. Now, for some of you, this would just be you exercising that energy of becoming a creator, being very inspired, having new ideas and actually putting, you know, putting yourself out there in a way where, it, you know, you're not really fully sure of it, it's kind of immature, but it's showing that you're willing to learn and grow. And that's going to be important if you want the universe to carry on and, and you know, reward your efforts. All right. So it's best to put your time and your energy out there. Money is coming. You got five, five, five. This is a symbol, a symbol of abundance. Money is about to appear in your life. And it's probably going to come through this new passion of inspiration and desires and all this creative energy that's going to come in all right now whenever creative energy comes in that is sexual energy all right so if you start becoming more creative guess what you also become more sexually attractive okay so be aware of that um, i don't know if that matters to you but that's something you should be aware of okay um i just feel like mostly it's gonna be like your your uh probably your hygiene your fitness your diet your routine your confidence your public recognition or the or the like your long-term goals the potential successes that you see you're going to be finding new creative ways to express yourself to put yourself out there no longer hanging in the cut waiting on things to fall into your lap instead you're going to be pursuing them you're going to put yourself out there with pride and confidence and <coughs> an energy of authenticity all right and being able to communicate but detached it's like so Aquarius is the evil genius, all right? So this is someone who's very good at talking and seeing situations from a higher view, but not judging other people for not knowing it or for not uh, knowing how to not conform to societal beliefs. You know how like when you become a free thinker and you meet other people, we call them sheeple, right? You meet these other people who you call sheeple or people who you say are sleep. When you meet them, not judging them for not knowing the information that you yourself know. All right, this is still uh, being a friend and exposing to them some truth, some realities, you know, and being there from a detached perspective that even if they don't accept the information that you're giving, it's okay. I was just doing this from an authentic purse, an authentic place. I wanted to share the truth that I know, my truth with you, and allow you to experience me in a real authentic way. So that's the type of energy going to be coming in. It's a rebirth. So that means however you've seen yourself before, the perspective of yourself before is going to be changing, but you're going to need to be in that Virgo energy of paying attention to the specific details and watching when things are starting to shift so that you can take advantage of these situations and take a risk on you. Because this is where you're in a period of time where you're going to be reclaiming your power, reclaiming your I guess, sovereignty, but this is reclaiming basically you know, your own uh freedom to choose and to do as you please without the judgment of others falling on your shoulders all right 
there's going to be a period of time where you're going to be feeling that way. Now, you could be, because Aquarius energy is here that always gives me, um, you could either be, because we got Virgo and Capricorn. These are people who usually like to be alone. So you might fluctuate between being alone and being kind of detached from people or seeming kind of cold. And maybe, because we got Virgo and Capricorn right next to each other. So this is something you're probably going to be doing like a lot of work or consistent work being more consistent, you know what I mean, more reliable, more steady, because Virgo, uh, Capricorn is a slow-moving energy. Virgo is a faster-moving energy, but up in the mental space. So practically, you're going to be taking the small steps. Mentally, you'll be jumping leaps and bounds, all right? You'll be solving problems that you probably didn't recognize that you had or any of that, you know what I mean? Virgo is represents deep introspection as well. So it could be that, well, I don't think it represents deep introspection. I think of it as representing deep introspection only because of the hermit. So, and because of this case, that's what we're thinking of. So at this point, Virgo is representing uh, deep introspection because that's what's going to be happening in order for you to have this deep rebirth, all right, and be able to uh, basically, I don't want to say illuminate, but no. Basically, so basically, this is how you're going to be able to uh, reveal yourself, I guess, for lighter, you know, lighter words. All right, so um, your advice here, though, it says, what is keeping you from expressing yourself to others? So dwell on that. Think about that. What is keeping you there? Ambition is the next thing I just heard. So something about your ambition is going to be peaking and driving and getting you going, all right? And this is part of regaining, your, regaining reclaiming your power, all right? So let's go over the signs one more time. We have Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, Aquarius. We got Leo. Oh. We got um, Scorpio, we got Capricorn, and we have Aries, okay? Oh, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, all right? Surprisingly, I don't have no air signs. Wow. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah Aquarius is an air sign. My bad. All right. Well, anyway, Pa one. That was your reading. Thanks for watching. This your boy, Nooney, and this Leo in the third house. Boom. Pa two. So... Pile two. What can you expect for the rest of the year? Oh. I've never seen that card before. We're going to see how that play out. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Okay. Let's go. I like it. I like it. This is a short pile. You didn't have as many cards as most of the decks, but that's good because we got someone who's pretty much straight to the point. What you're probably going to be looking to do is turn passion into paychecks. So you may become, um, I don't know, the, the first word that came to my mind was a herbalist or like a spiritualist. But I wasn't thinking spiritualist. I was thinking like herbalist, maybe like a vegan or like a dietitian or something or someone who does health. But it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't have to be that. Maybe you could just be working out and you know, TikToking it and showing people, you know, your workout routines or something. But that's the first thing that came to mind. But I know that you're going to be learning, all right? Probably claiming your, because here we got cat spirit, first card out, independence, all right? And investing in yourself, all right? You got investment and we got paycheck. So you could be investing or investing into yourself. This could be like dealing with, you know, I know you're going to be dealing with finances, all right? But uh, when it's going to be in a period of time where you're not really feeling abundant, don't feel like you have any creative ideas, you're not really sure how to turn your passion into paychecks or how to turn your ideas into it, it's a feeling of like, I don't know how I can take, you know, take charge of this, all right? I don't know how I can take charge of my, of my life or my direction in life, where I would like to go. So there would be an energy of you cleansing this judgmental space or judgmental energy, all right? Judgmental is usually um, bogging yourself down with um, harsh criticisms of yourself and others. You know, so, you know, like, let's say if you want to start a, a hot dog stand and there's somebody who, you know, a couple blocks over who has a hot dog stand and there's some things that he could or she could be doing better with the hot dog stand. Judgment would be saying this is probably the worst hot dog stand. This guy is not really a good business owner. This this woman is not really a good business owner. This person is not, you know, and then also it's not just judging others. This is judging yourself because it's a mirror. So how you talk to others or yourself is how you talk to the world. So you're gonna be looking at that. You're gonna be getting rid of that, cleansing that. We got contemplate and meditate. And this is a time, what is this? It's a new moon. So this is a new, a new intentions are being set here. So you're being, you're, you're gonna be uh, navigating your emotions and your feelings. So you, you're gonna be touching, all right, touching bases with the inner child. Okay, I get that. I get that, because that's why you'd be an empress in reverse. 
not trusting in your, your manifestation powers, not trusting in the natural ability of the universe to provide for you. So you're going to be afraid of taking a risk, all right? But you're going to be learning. So during this period of time from, from now until the end of the year, possibly into the beginning of the year, you're going to be learning about independence and not being worried about uh, needing other people's resources or needing other people to help you or to provide validity to whatever you're doing or saying, you know what I mean? This could be also just you becoming an, an independent entrepreneur or just you know striking out and doing something just for you. It says, spirit wants you to know that it's okay to free yourself from someone or something if the vibration isn't aligning with you anymore. Okay, and you could be, if that's the case, then you could be leaving either a Sagittarius or you could be leaving a Libra or a Taurus or you could be a Libra or a Taurus. Did I give you the signs? I don't think I did. All right, so we got Libra, Gemini, Aquarius, Libra, Taurus, Pisces, Sagittarius. All right, and that's the signs I got. <coughs> but we do have a new beginning and uh, emotional security. All right, and this could, or, or it's not necessarily a new beginning, it's just a readjustment, a realigning. Ooh, that's why. Ooh, that makes sense. I get it. All right, because it's going to be in a period of time where you're really not feeling, you know, the most attractive or the most, and when I say attractive, I don't always mean physical. I mean attractive, like pulling in the things that you truly desire and that you really want that would make you feel comfortable or secure or that would boost your self-esteem. So it's like when you're putting effort into, let's say, working out and you don't see the results, it does not increase your self-esteem. If you're on a diet and you're not seeing the results, that does not boost your self-esteem. If you're creating a hobby or a plan and you're not keeping true to it or keeping up with it, that does not increase your self-esteem. So if you're in a relationship, I'm giving you examples. This is not exactly what I'm feeling, but giving you examples. So if you're in a relationship and your needs or your desires or the communication is off and you're not feeling loved, nurtured, or cared for, or even seen in the relationship, then it is not a relationship that is going to boost your self-esteem. It is not going to make you feel like you have much worth. So you'll be letting go of these situations. You'll be releasing and cleansing a lot of situations where you're like that, where you feel like you're being undervalued, underpaid, under undernoticed, you know, maybe overworked, you know, or just feeling distraught, not taken care of, not nurtured. You know what I mean? That type of energy, you'll be releasing that because what's coming in is an energy of you becoming more emotionally resolved within yourself or more emotionally confident within yourself, all right? Because the five of, uh, five of shells is here. And five of shells, sometimes the five of cups is about resentment, regret, shame, but it's also about adjusting your perspective to the past grievances that happened. So it's like recognizing like, okay, this has happened in the past, but it's already happened. So I don't have to keep holding on to the shame, the guilt, the resentment, the frustration. I can let that go. You know, that's water under the bridge now. You know, and that's no longer my my reality. And so that's where you're going to be coming into releasing that. All right. Releasing this feeling of not having any choices or any options, because that's where you're going to be at first. When this is all going on, you're going to be in an area like maybe having opportunities or doorways to go, but not really feeling like these are anything that can do anything or grow to anything. Might even be scrapping them. You know, you might scrap all the ideas you got or the, all the opportunities you got. Maybe if you have options, you might just be scrapping them because this could be also love. So if you got like love options that you're not really feeling, you might just scrap all of them. Ugh, I don't want them. Because it's going to be an energy where you're really not feeling up to your, your up to par, like feeling up to your best around this time and period. But all that's going to be swapping because you're going to stop judging yourself. You're going to cleanse that energy and get rid of that, that negative pattern, that negative self-talk. Right, you could be learning new things. You could be traveling. Cause I got Sagittarius energy, so it always gives me optimism. And with uh, Scorpio, not Scorpio energy, with Pisces energy, that's a dreamer. So with Sagittarius and Pisces energy, even though they're both ruled by Jupiter, well, Pisces is ruled by Neptune, but they do have Pisces. Oh, I think it's the nighttime ruler of Jupiter, or it's the daytime. I think it's the nighttime ruler of Jupiter. Anyway. With Pisces and Sagittarius energy connected, this is someone who has large dreams, very visionary. This is someone who can also, uh, they also feel like they deserve for the best things to happen for them, even if it doesn't necessarily seem realistic, all right? And so you'll probably be coming into this energy of fluctuating between fantasy and reality, but having big hopes and big dreams, big desires, and just be like allowing yourself to feel like you deserve them. You know, with independence, this is the energy of, of not needing other people to you know validate your feelings your emotions to coddle you you don't need that you won't need other people for attention you know none of that 
to be getting over that. The most of it is probably investing in yourself or investing into a, a passion project, a hobby, something that you see can make some money. That's something that you're most likely gonna be doing, getting more information on there, exploring on it, uh, researching on it, getting as much inf like education. You might be even going back to school. You might be going back to school too because that's where uh, the ninth house is. So it could be like getting higher education. This is like college, large training that gives you like certification. Um, could be traveling abroad, leaving from country to country. Um, but Sagittarius is also, because he's an explorer, he is also the explorer of yourself in large bodies of water. 88% of water is us. So you probably will be exploring yourself and that's where you'll get the independence from as well. You know, exploring what you like. What are your real desires? How do you feel about these things? What really gets you going? What gets you passionate? All right, and not judging yourself for having desires, wants, needs, you know, not for having your desires or the things that you really want or the things that you really want to engage in or indulge in. So if you just want to be a, I don't know, maybe if you want to sell ink pens or incense or you want to sell socks for dogs as a full time, you know, career, you won't care how other people perceive your business or perceive what you want to go after, you know, because you'll feel that you deserve all the better things, all the finer things, all right? So I'm also feeling like there's going to be probably that energy where you're going to be um, feeling like you can do it and then feeling like you can't do it or always sitting back, you know, kind of dreaming and fantasizing about what things can be. And that's good. That's going to be what's going to allow you to activate these gifts that you have. It's going to be like a childish energy of like innocence and like seeing the world with, I almost want to say, um, I was going to say rose tinted glasses and that's usually not productive but in this case seeing the world how you would like to see the world so that you can go after it is a good a good thing for you right now because right now what you're doing is judging yourself making yourself feel like as if you're not good enough for these things that you don't have any viable options or opportunities that this is the best the best course of action that you can take it seems more practical when Sagittarius and Pisces energy gets in to hell with practicality this is all about passion dreams and desires what do you want you know what I mean and then allowing that inner child or allowing yourself to free flow or allowing yourself to fully express the talents and the gifts that you have all right and we got because we got the fox here so the fox is also about time to transform so you may have to stay low for a brief second right just so that way you can get out and run free in the way that you would like to so it's like record so the fox is a sign of being very aware very sleek very sly, very adaptable. So you're gonna be coming into that type of energy of being very adaptable and it's gonna to have to do with your emotions. This is gonna give you brand new hope. So your feelings and your emotions may wane, they may go up and down because we got that Pisces meditate and contemplate which is like a hot cold, hot cold, hot cold, you know what I mean? And it gets kind of annoying until you find an even balance to it where it's not just hot, it's lukewarm or it's just warm, it's just right, like baby bear's porch, just right, all right? Um, it says, can you feel the divine asking you to breathe because it's going to be okay? Yes. And it says, are you or someone being too stubborn and refusing to change? So, yeah, you could be leaving somebody like that who you feel is just not, uh, they're maybe taking more than what they're giving or they're becoming more of a burden than an asset. All right. Or you could stop feeling like you're more of a burden than an asset, you know, because it's that it's either one of those energies. Either you're going to be seeing someone doing this, becoming a burden, feeling like they're becoming a burden to you, or you're going to be perceiving yourself as that. But remember, it's inside out. So if you perceive someone as being that way, you're going to also probably be perceiving yourself as being that way. So recognize that. All right. Um, I just feel like you're going to be taking action and getting more focused. All right. That's what's going to happen. Like your feelings are going to become... Uh, more maybe realign or refined. I think that's a realign, but I'm thinking refined. So this is kind of like shaving off the impurities or shaving off the past grievances and then becoming more focused within yourself about how would you like to feel about these situations because your optimism is what's going to fuel you to be able to get what it is that you really desire. All right. But first of all, you know, you'll probably just be cleaning because cleanse is here. So that means you will be cleaning. And then you got free spirited energy. So mostly this is about you becoming independent, free spirited, and just taking life how you would like to, but more from like a childish perspective, an optimistic dreamer perspective. 
kind of, I mean, it's free spirit because Sagittarius is a free spirit, you know, and it's just like allowing the world or allowing, you know, life to show you possibilities that you didn't feel like you deserved before. You're going to be getting those. All right. This could be options that may come in because five of shells for me is a readjustment of emotional feelings like uh, coming into um, a, a better version of yourself. Because, you know, six of, six, of, uh, six of cups for me is also releasing childhood releasing childhood beliefs, childhood burdens, uh, releasing old childhood feelings, that nostalgic feeling. Like, you know how you would um, react as like a 16 year old, a 15 year old, a nine year old, you know, you're like, this is my girlfriend, this is my boyfriend. And all y'all do is hold hands at the park. That's childish love, you know? So this is that energy of readjusting. So this is coming into like more of an adult processing feeling. So you don't need other adults to tell you that you're doing a good job. You don't need other adults to tell you that the life that you're choosing is the best for you. You won't need other adults to tell you, you know, whatever it is that you want to do. Like, this is about you claiming your independence probably as an adult. You know, you may be growing up into one of those, those periods where you could be like 24 to 25, 29 to 32, 36 to 39, and 40 to 45, something like that. That's usually, I think those are usually the areas. And then we have 55 and 47, I think. Are like the periods like where it's important, like you go through like shifts in your perspective and come into like an older, wiser version of yourself. That's most likely what you're gonna be doing, but this is still gonna be a free-spirited version of you being older and wiser, but just investing in your own um, emotional stability and your own independence, just being who you wanna be. Kind of like pile one, but this one is a lot different. You won't be... Uh, talking bad about yourself, you'll be more optimistic and feeling like you deserve all the best and the finer things in life. So yeah, but let's go over the signs again. We got Sagittarius, uh, we have Pisces, Libra, Gemini, Aquarius, and Libra and Taurus. Okay, so Pile Two, that was your reading. Thanks for watching. This your boy Nuni, and it's Leo in the third house. Boom. Pile three. So, pile three. What can you expect for the rest of the year? Spirit having your back. So you could be a Virgo. Could be a Scorpio. Could be a Capricorn. Oh. oh, that's a lot of cards in this deck. All right, so we got a lot of cards this time. Could be a Gemini. You could be a Pisces. All right, so I felt like some type of rumor could be coming out. Or it could be like a betrayal, something that you already gotten over. Um, or it could just be you getting over. I feel like it's more so uh, getting over some type of betrayal. Or it could be like information. You could finally be releasing some type of ending that you've already dealt with. All right, gaining clarity on it. Now, you could be also coming into a new union with someone or you could just become more clear about what you want in a relationship, all right? Spirit has your back here. It says you're about to get sweet rewards for your hard work. So you could be coming back, oh yeah, in the end of a tough cycle approaches, coming back stronger and better. Seeing the bigger picture. Thinking now about the long term, the long game, okay? So you could be planning, doing some type of hard work. So I feel like you're gonna be, maybe helpful people will be around or you'll be a lot more helpful. It says, leave the pieces that no longer serve your highest purpose. So it's going to be letting go of things that are no longer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I, okay. I, that's what I thought. You're going to be looking at things long term. You could be coming into like divine union. You know what I mean? This, the lovers is not usually about marriage. But this one is like, you know, like, like, you know, finding love or becoming clear about what you want in love. All right. So you may have been kind of like neject, neglecting some of the information or rejecting some information that was coming in, some wisdom where you weren't really learning. You're gonna be working through your fears of being overly critical, maybe, of being overly skeptical of love. All right, negotiating, and then oh, okay, so you're gonna be negotiating and individuality. All right, so that just means that you're gonna be negotiating your freedom. So you may be someone who has issues with uh, commitment, because I'm looking at work through your fears, which is a fear of intimacy. All right, and then we said what I said, uh, what I just said about that, negotiating your. Um, 
negotiating your independence. So this is like being, so yeah, you're probably like a runner. Do I have that here? So you're probably like a what? You could be like a runner. It says, don't let people continue to take nuts from your tree for free. They better put in the work to get them. So, yeah. All right, so this is what I'm thinking. You probably a person that maybe likes casual sex. And, I, and this, because this is what's coming to me at first. Now, at first I was just seeing like taking the nuts from your tree for free. I'm thinking nuts, like, you know, sex. People are coming to you for just sex. Because here is like the first thing I figured out, I was like, this is going to be in a period of time where you're gaining clarity on what do you really want in a partner? What do you want in an intimate partnership? Now, this could be also in business because Capricorn is here and Virgo is here. All right, but... This could also just most likely it's about love because fear of intimacy is here. But business and, and love are similar. You know, they're similar. So, you know, take it how it resonates. And here you'll be working out as well, doing something with your body, taking care of your health. You know, could be training if you're not necessarily taking care of your health. You're training. And this could be training for work, anything. Training for whatever it may be. All right. Negotiating your individuality is about freedom. So it's just like finding how to be in a relationship while yet having your own individual, you know, needs and wants and desires and, and things that you want to interact with, right? So it says you are on the, you, it, this is a sign that you are on the right track. Stop worrying and focus on the positive, right? And that's what I said about you being overly critical or overly skeptical about relationships. Spirit is here. So the first card out was spirit has your back. So you're being led into possibly a long-term commitment or a soulmate that is coming in. There's going to be clarity that's going to be given here, all right? This may be that energy where you may be feeling a little bit, um, you probably be in an energy where you're feeling uh, unavailable, emotionally aloof, not wanting to share, because it's like you'll still be in an energy where you're harping on. So either a rumor came out, secrets were exposed to you, that secrets from things that you've already gotten over. So this is like getting new information about something that you didn't even care about, and then like, like harping on it again and kind of like rehashing the situation even though you've really gotten over it you kind of like think about it again like i can't believe this dude i can't believe this girl they really pulled that stunt when you don't really care it's that type of thing all right you'll be in that type of energy but what this is doing is helping provide you clarity with what you really want all right helping you be more direct about making the choices and love okay because you got the nine of wands here is about boundaries for me nine of wands is a fear of uh pushing forward and being persistent and it's only because you didn't have a backbone or you didn't create boundaries okay and this is boundaries and love so you're most likely going to be either lowering your boundaries or your expectations you know what I mean and at the same time so you'll be in an energy where you're afraid of lowering your boundaries first all right that's what's going to be happening because you're in the fluctuation of like I want to be independent but I would like to be in a relationship so there's where the negotiation is coming in you, you know you have to figure out how you can be independent yet how to work with someone else in order to build a relationship. So your fear of intimacy is what you're working for, what you're working through. And with the end of a tough cycle approaches, that means that all your hard work and effort that you put into is gonna pay off. And it says so right here, you're about to get sweet rewards for your hard work. So that's what's about to happen. So you're gonna be seeing, I guess, relationships from a more larger scale or from a bigger picture, a bigger view of understanding why things happen the way they work and how each part plays a part in the grand scheme of things. So that's like Virgo and Sagittarius energy. You know, so that Virgo being the micro, I mean the uh, micro and Sagittarius being the macro, you're able to see the finer parts of how to get to the bigger picture. That's what's gonna be coming in for you for the next, uh, for the rest of the year, right? And this could also go into the beginning of the year, you know. Just because I'm telling you that it's gonna come from the beginning of the year for this year does not mean that just because you didn't do the work that it's just gonna magically fall into your lap. That's not how things work. All right. I'm just telling you what the potential of is here. All right. So you could be getting new ideas, visionary ideas. All right. These could be things that, you know, these are things that you just normally wouldn't have thought about before. They weren't necessarily. I mean, I call them futuristic ideas. And when I call futuristic ideas, it's just ideas that society is not ready for yet. So it could be something like that. You could be thinking about relationships on a whole nother scale and be wanting to broadcast them because I think a Sagittarius is being a broadcaster, a loudspeaker, a public enthusiast. So you could be wanting to broadcast them, new ideas about relationships or relationship dynamics or information that you discover. You may be wanting to broadcast those. Um, some of y'all will be getting back in the gym. 
your third eye chakra will be working. So you got a lot of you guys will be recognizing emotional manipulation or rec recognizing your emotional tendencies to to stray away from intimacy. So you may become becoming more aware of that as well, because we got a lot of uh, not sacral chakra. We got a lot of um, crown chakra, which has to do with your intuition and has to do with your uh, clarity has to do with spiritual downloads, all right? And knowing how to process the information that spirit is giving you, making sense of it, all right? It says, are you giving yourself credit? This is your advice. Are you giving yourself credit for taking care of others so positively? Oh, so protectively. And then it says, are you seeing yourself as, are you seeing your life at a standstill with blockages instead of blessings? And then we have, what in your life needs to be healed? So you... <coughs> <coughs> so you're going to be healing. Oh, we already know that. We're always in a constant influx of healing. But this is where you're going to be making use of uh, making use of previous wisdom that was handed down to you. Now, this could be uh, wisdom that was given to you by um, older members of your family that may have not necessarily been. Uh, it's outdated. How about that? Like holding on to outdated thoughts, or outdated wisdom about relationships and intimacy and getting closer to people. All right. That's going to be transforming because Scorpio energy is here. All right. And it may it may be a little bit difficult because you got a Capricorn energy next to it, which is about res, uh, resilience, persis, persistence, perseverance. You know, what I mean, having to tackle trials and tribulations. That's a Capricorn trait. So right next to Scorpio, this is a trial and tribulations that you've experienced and emotional uh, intimacy. This could be emotional trauma that you still hold on to, psychological trauma that you still hold on to. And this comes from childhood all right you're still dealing with that but you're working your way through that you're going to be actually facing that looking at that dissecting that and becoming more skeptical of that as opposed to being skeptical about relationships all right because spirit has your back which means that spirit is leading you into these type of unions or this type of union all right the lovers here is a spiritually blessed union and here we got the beauty and the beast so i don't know Maybe that's like a favorite Disney thing that you had. Um, leaving pieces that no longer serve. And that has to do with your fear of intimacy. I'm not wanting to get closer. So that's really what you're going to be doing. Just getting rid of that fear of getting closer to someone and allowing, like finding the, the equal balance between being independent or being who you are, single of a relationship, as well as learning how to work together with someone in a relationship and building something solid and practical. Something that can stand the test of time, but it doesn't even necessarily mean that you guys have to be long-term. The lovers is just like a soulmate. It's just a feeling of being close, of being intimate, of allowing yourself to be vulnerable. So this is that finding uh, dynamics where you're allowed to be vulnerable and allow other people to see you for who you are, flaws and all, without feeling judged and without judging. So this is gonna allow you to bring closer relationships more deeper relationships that where you can feel a bond of trust and camaraderie and security and safety all right so that's what's going to be coming as a bunch of either i said a bunch i don't know if it's going to be a bunch of relationships i feel like it might just be one but it could be a bunch because the first thing that came out my mouth was a bunch of relationships so i guess a bunch of relationships the lover is a sexually induced card so that could be options you could be having a choice in love between two 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 uh options that could be going on here you know what I mean? But you'll also be closing out a pattern and a cycle or closing out an ending that was a very tumultuous, very hard to deal with. It caused a lot of tension and stress on your mental, all right? And it also kind of closed you off from like expressing how you feel or like really interpreting how you feel. And that's what you're gonna be releasing and gaining clarity on. So this is gonna be in a period of time where you're feeling like you, you still need to guard yourself or protect yourself or just give up, but you really have the desire to like persist but you don't really have an idea of how or any creative ways to really like make the situation do what, what you would like it to do. Clarity will be coming in about what you really want in relationships. So it's just going to be like a mush of feelings during that time where it's like, I don't know how to proceed or how to persist. I kind of want to give up, but I don't want to give up. You know what I mean? But I would like to have a partner, but what kind of partner? So all this stuff is like encouraging you and helping you sort and find and like finer sift through what it is that you really want in a partner or in a companion, all right? I feel like more like companion, but it could be, I mean, it could be long-term, you know what I mean? Because Capricorn is a long-term type of energy and Scorpio is a kind of like clingy, possessive, 
you know, I don't know if I think of them as long term, but they could be. You know, Capricorn and Scorpio is like a good pair for like intensity and strength and goodwill, like long term strength will. So maybe this could be someone who you're seeing as like a long person or like people who are seeing as long term potential. Maybe they're seeing you that way. Maybe you're seeing them that way. But the thing is allowing yourself to be able to be comfortable enough to get that close so that it can become something. All right, where you guys can build a level of trust, loyalty, dedication, all right, and stability, all right? Emotional security is what you're gonna be working on with partners. So if I had to you know, sum it up in three words or a couple words, that would have been it. Emotional security with partners and understanding what it is that you really want in a connection, all right? What would allow you to be vulnerable and bear your soul to another being, another person, okay? So you're going to be you know, getting downloads and you're going to be tapping into your intuition and trusting your instincts because you'll be in a period in time where you're not trusting your instincts, all right? Where you're listening to what other people are telling you and you're feeling like, um, like maybe you should just close off your feelings and emotions for right now and just, you know, just be very logical. Instead, it's saying you're going to be just, this is part of the, I guess, part of the growth, the growth period. So you're going to be going through that and you're going to be picking out or picking apart the pieces that aren't really true for you. A lot of this is based on stuff that you've learned from childhood. So once you release that, you'll no longer be holding on to that. But it says also be aware of people who are taking your nuts for free. Make them work hard for it. So make people put in the time and the effort to get to know you. All right. That's what this is about. Making people put in the time and the effort to get to know you. That way you can get more intimate, deeper relationships that last longer as opposed to short-term flings where when it's all the way over you don't really know him or her you're like well i didn't really know what they're about i don't know what they like their favorite color or, i know a little bit about them but it's all shallow you know scorpio energy in its in its uh un, un evolved stage is very shallow when it comes to emotions they're very sexual but they are not very emotionally in depth they are not very compassionate they don't prefer to connect with people with passion and emotions they prefer just sex physical and then aloof. So you may be in that energy where you're doing that, just wanting to be aloof with people, just wanting to be sexual, just wanting to connect, and then you, you know what I mean? Because it's a fear of, of, of intimacy, and it's a fear of losing your individuality or your freedom. That's gonna be changed, all right? So let me give you signs again. We got Gemini, Pisces, Scorpio, uh, Capricorn, and Virgo, all right? So, Pow 3, that was your reading. Thanks for watching. This your boy Noonie, and this Leo in the third house. Boom. Pow 4. So, Pow 4, what can you expect for the rest of this year? Oh, now is oh, yeah, okay, okay. Dang, I wanted this my pile. All right, so this is a lucky time for you. All right, it has to do with your desires. Okay, so you could be, oh, oh, god damn, god damn, okay. All right, so this one is, is like um, getting your desires met, all right? This could be in like passion, like desire with sex and, and relationships, but this could just in general be any of the desires that you really, really want. Desires that you might have thought were negative or you might have thought were toxic or weren't good for you or you might have guilted or shamed yourself about it. You're going to be getting that. You're going to be getting over that, all right? Be getting it out of that energy of lack, of poverty, you know, or feeling like there isn't any, any more or there isn't enough. Because we've got the seven of cups here, all right? So this is about, uh, and we've got seven of wands. So two sevens, huh? All right, so this is divine intervention here. So luck is on your side. Two sevens, lucky seven. Do we have any more sevens? Uh, no, that's not that. That's 14. That's a five, though. So there's going to be change and growth and expansion that's going to be coming because we've got a lot of Sagittarius energy, all right? So we got Sagittarius, Sagittarius, Aquarius, Scorpio, Aquarius, Leo, Taurus. Could be your sign, could be someone else's sign. You just could be exercising the energy of being very optimistic, yet being very futuristic about your thoughts, being very uh, community-based or large-scale based. So a lot of your stuff is, you're going to be very friendly, very optimistic, very outgoing. You're going to experience a lot of that. Now, it could be a lot of sex. You know, it could be, could be, because desire is here. And I always think of this as the lovers in reverse or the devil card. So it could be like 
sex here. But anyway, I feel like you're going to become more tolerant to your desires, all right? And more, um, so Sagittarius is a, is a person who believes in luck, you know what I mean, believes that they believe that they deserve all the finer things. That's what Jupiter does when it is in your chart. Jupiter doesn't necessarily give you gifts. What Jupiter does is make you feel like you deserve those gifts, and that way you can attract them. So it gives you that energy of optimism and believing that you are deserving of the finer things. So that's what you're going to be doing. All right, you may become become a lot more opinionated, and it says now you got now is a lucky time twice. All right, lucky time in a rabbit spirit. So it's about taking a chance and a risk and not being afraid to go out there and venture and put yourself out there. That's why I say you're going to be getting options because you got the seven of cups here too, and it's going to be in a period of time where you feel like. You're either having to deal with past options, previous situations that you had before, and still guarding yourself against them, like guarding yourself against advances from people in your past, which puts you in an energy of being, um, of like feeling scarcity, of thinking that there are no other better options out there. You know, it's like, like this is all that's around. So this is like your exes coming back around, people from your past, old friends, old lovers, old jobs, old careers, old hobbies, whatever. Things that you're no longer desiring may be coming back around, all right? And you may be needing to uh, find, like, kind of like, okay, so for me, when it's in this, in this example, tempers here is about trusting in how you feel about all the situations seeing if all these things are aligning with what your bigger picture is. Like, what is it that you really desire? And are these things that are coming around you or that, that are around you in your environment, are they matching up and aligned with what you desire? You know what I mean? It's like putting yourself in the right place at the right time and the right environments to magnify what it is that you really want to happen for you, to really bring in your desires. And trusting your luck whenever you make a move or whenever you try something, that spirit has your back and that you're on a, on a lucky time, like you're on a lucky streak. So act as if you're on a lucky streak and pursue and persist with the things that you really want. Be very valiant. You know what I mean? With the Seven of Wands, it's a sign of winning. All right, Seven of Wands is upright. So this is a sign of winning and victory, triumphing over other competitors, triumphing over obstacles, triumphing over the things that you like, triumphing and winning your desires, having the higher moral ground, you know, having the higher advantage. You have the advantage because you're lucky. All right. It says if you are brave enough to say goodbye, life will reward you with a new hello. So you're probably dealing with old people. And once you let go of those old people, you know, that's why it's, it's like it's giving you the energy of like old exes, old lovers, old people that you might have had an experience with. They're coming back around. You know, what I mean, and some may be good for you. Some may not. All right. But this is something that's meant to be karmically learned. So there's a lesson that you're going back over again because we have the rule in reverse. There's a lesson that you're going back over again to experience. All right. Now, this could be some, somewhere where you were afraid to take a risk or this is something that you're they're being warned not to take too many risks, like not like allow, uh, allow fate to play its hand. So you don't have to take control. Just allow fate to play its hand. OK, luck is on your side. And so a new a lot of creative ideas will be coming in. All right. And these may be ideas that um, they are expansive because it's Jupiter energy. But these are ideas that um, they're. How do I put it into words that they're not, it's not that they're not traditional. They are not something that you can, um, like you can't control them. They're maybe erratic, you know, they're uncontrollable ideas, but they're like ideas where you might have guilted and shamed yourself. So like, you know how you want to express yourself and be free and be wild spirit. Let's say like we're at a bar and you're like, you know what? I'd like to jump on that bar and just dance. You know what I mean? And, you know, in your mind, you might be like, I can't do that. That's not really adult or ladylike or, or manlike of me. You know, I, I can't do that. Let me, you know, let me just chill. You know, I'm just giving you examples. This may not necessarily be the ideas, but ideas like this, like creative ideas that are a little bit uh, groundbreaking or cutting edge to you are going to be something that you're doing. So you're going to be what diving deeper. Sharing your song, yeah, you're gonna be sharing your song, speaking, communicating, putting yourself out there. And that's that's really it. Like not doubting that this is a good time for you to take advantage of situations where you didn't see an opportunity, you'll be doing that now. Cause you'll be in an energy where you don't see other opportunities, where you feel like this is what's being offered and that what this is is not enough or this isn't isn't valuable or it's not it's not uh, aligned with what you're hoping for or what you're looking for in life, you know, and, and it's incitement. Excitement is what's going to be coming. It says, you exude divine, I mean, you exude divine feminine power and psychic gifts that are untouchable to muggle, that are untouchable to muggle. Oh, embrace the divine within you. 
Yeah, and with the you know, it's a spiritual. So even you didn't become more spiritually aware, all right, and it's becoming more spiritually aware about what aligns with you, trusting in your your psychic and empathic abilities. All right, so that's why I was saying before I was like, you're gonna be figuring out what aligns with you because you may have people from your past come back around. This is part of a karmic pattern or cycle that you're supposed to experience. Some things, because the will of fortune is here, even though it's in reverse, some things can be for the good, some things can be for the bad. The whole thing is you cannot control what happens in this pattern or this dynamic. So that's why you're needing to trust your intuition in this moment, trust your psychic abilities, all right? And allow spirit to just kind of like work as magic and trust that no matter what happens, you're lucky. Luck is on your side, all right? Look at how situations can play out for you as opposed to looking out how they can't, all right? So you may be leaving some people out or you may be letting some people back in. That's that, you know, that's that temperance energy of finding a happy medium. Maybe they don't come back in as lovers. Maybe they just come back in as friends. Or maybe instead of casual relationships that you guys might have had, maybe this time we take it long term. This time I have the ability and the skills and luck is on my side. We can take this as far as we would like it to. That may be the energy that you're going to be in because it's going to be an energy where at first you turned your back on things that you really desired. Like you didn't really feel like the desires you had, they were either negative or you felt like they were toxic or you felt like they were unachievable or unattainable. Here you're going to be coming into an energy of like being more open-minded, more, uh, optimistic about it happening like this can this can happen i would like this and seeing this perspective from your own perspective because we got aquarius energy seeing your perspective as your own perspective and not focused on how others will see it you know what i mean not being afraid to be able to take a chance and run out there and just free flow all right frequency of sound so you may be singing or you could be i just feel like you maybe talk a lot more you'll be saying something you're getting involved it says, are you carrying the past with you? So you're going to be letting go of that. That's what, okay, you're letting go of the past. So you'll be selective about who you let in from the past and who you dash away. Now, some people say, I don't want anybody from the past. Hmm, I don't care. They are there for a reason, because that's why we got the, the karmic cycle here. Those people are here for a reason. So you just need to sort through who is here for a good reason and who is not and who is aligned with who you are right now or who you're coming into and who is not that's what this is going to be about all right new ideas new creative thinking patterns you know getting rid of outdated ideas or outdated thinking patterns all that is going to go away all right and this is going to be a time where you're still like blocking advances from possibly options lovers so like maybe new options and uh, lovers are coming in you may be blocking the options like ah, uh, ah. i'll let you know i'll let you know not right now that type of stuff you know what i mean it could be at a period of time where you're doing that you know or where you're having a lot of them in but you're just like mm, is this it are these all of them is this this is this all the options i have people from the past or people who are i've already dealt with you know what i mean Instead, you're going to be looking at it from a more optimistic view of like, okay, I got options. Now, some of these are not good for me because maybe I've experienced them before, or some of these are good for me based on how I preserve, you know, how I decide to see the situation. I can see it as, okay, we were young and we were dumb, but we're older and I have new information now and I know what to do now for me. So now I can be more direct. Now I can be more honest. Now I can be more creative, more free spirited, more lighthearted and not so controlling or possessive or jealous or whatever. Now with new information and understanding that luck is on my side, I can persist and pursue in the way that I feel will work. I don't have to, you know, overthink this situation. I can just get into it. You know what I mean? Be open minded and just get into it. Because Aquarius energy is open mindedness. So you're gonna to need to get into it. It's a detached ability to allow others to be who they are. You know, so, and you have cat, a cat here too, that's independent. So allowing others to be who they are and becoming very outgoing, all right? This is gonna get the desires met, desires that you might've pushed away or felt like you didn't deserve. You'll be feeling like you deserve them or you'll at least be a, finding what, what actually, um, what aligns with your desires. Like, are these people, are these options, are these avenues that I'm taking, are they aligned with my desires, what I really see for my life? You know what I mean? So it says, are you carrying the past with you? So the past will be there. 
and it says if you are brave enough to say goodbye life will reward you with a new hello so some of you will be releasing them some of you will be taking another spin at the wheel with them seeing them from another perspective all right because all it is is a, is a lack mindset the lack mindset is that we can't repatch this we can't repair this that you know there's nothing that can be done here you know or that these are all the options that i have to pick for that's a lack mindset meaning that what i see right here and right now is all that there ever will be for me you'll be releasing that getting over that and fighting back and becoming victorious over that over that uh, perception of yourself or of reality all right and this will present you either with new options some being old or it presents you with options that came out of nowhere. So if you didn't have options, this will present options that came out of nowhere. And it'll come from new creative ideas that you got that came from nowhere, which is really just spirit. All right. But you're very lucky. This is a good time. Pursue that with optimism, power, and zeal, and zest for life. And see what comes of it. See what happens. All right. Here's your, here's your, uh, your signs because we're done with this reading. All right. We got Aquarius. Sagittarius, Leo, Scorpio, Taurus, and Aquarius, and then we have Sagittarius again. All right, so pile four, that was your reading. Thanks for watching. This your boy Nuni, and that's Leo in the third house.